Uh, this might not be the service for you. If you love a little bit of chaos, this is going to be perfect for you. Um, but before we get into the chaotic part, uh, would you stand as we just join together in an opening prayer? Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, whilst you're on your feet, really simple job, I want you to get yourselves into four teams. Four teams. I don't know how many we've got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-six. Divide into four. Sorry. Six, six. I was looking at the teachers there. That's uh, uh, so. So a couple of groups of uh, of six and a couple of groups of five, and that would uh, uh, sixes. Get yourselves into groups of six. Four groups of six. Four groups of six, and then we'll work out whether that maths has gone wrong. Four groups of six. I might have missed the children, because they're quite small, so they could just be added in. But if you go for adults, group of six, and gather yourself some children. Okay, so you look like a fully formed group. Awesome. You appear to be a fully formed group over here. Awesome, well done. Uh, this looks like a fully formed group here. I'm not entirely sure whether this is a fully formed group or whether this just happened to be a, a logical dispersion of people. Um, there you are, you've got need one of those. Okay. So, really simple. Really simple. Some of you get to sit and be with the piece of paper. Others of you need to go out on a scavenger hunt and find pictures. Um, so, around the church, there are little pictures. Piles, hang on, hang on, there are little pictures. Um, your job is to go and find the little pictures that are around the church. There is a pile of, in each area, there are four of the same picture. To make life easier, if you could bring back the picture that has your number on it. So you are group number one. You are group number two. You are group number three. And at the back, you're group number four. So only bring back a picture if it's got your number on the back of it. That way you won't end up with four of the same picture and everybody will hopefully get everything they need. Um, so, the idea is that you go around and you grab the pictures, you come back and you should be able to arrange the pictures to make um, the Bible reading for today uh, as a visual thing for the Bible reading for today. Go. And as soon as you found some pictures, take them back to the person who's coordinating so they can start laying out the pictures and hopefully you'll see that the pictures match part of the, um, the reading that you've got. So your pictures should match the reading that you've got. So try and get them in the right order. Yeah, that's a picture. Yep, yep.
Come on, Annie, get it sorted, get it organised. <laughs> if uh, if you need more help now you've got a, a load um see see whether you can um you, you, some adults or some children stay behind see if you can organize your start organizing your pictures take them back to your group once you've got some in your hand take them back to your group because you need to do some organizing You need to you need to get them back to your group so they can start organising. I'm going to give you another five minutes and then we're going to start going through. Five minutes. Four minutes. Three minutes left. Three minutes. We've got to move on. Okay, you've got two minutes left to, to hunt out stuff.
seats, please. Everybody back to your seats. Everybody back to your seats. We're going to come to the answers in a minute. Um, for those of you who are uh, single-mindedly focused on an activity, we're going to do some worship. And if, uh, if, if there's people who are still like, I need to get this done, uh, you can do that whilst we're singing. Uh, those of you who really don't care, you just enjoyed the running around, you're not interested in this, let's stand together and worship God as we sing, uh, God is our great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hand. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His Okay, grab a seat. Grab a seat. We're going to work through this now so you can get everything in order. You can see how well you've done, how well you haven't done, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll see where we're at. So um, if, you, uh, if you want to gather around your pictures, grab around your, gather around your pictures and, uh, and, and see where we're at. So the first one, uh, number one, should be a dove representing the Spirit of the Lord. So you should have a dove for number one. Uh, the Lord has anointed me, some anointing oil. You can find some anointing oil. If you're, if you're stuck, Luke's, Luke's uh, putting the pictures up on the screen. So you should see the pictures on the screen. So that's what you're looking for. To proclaim good news to the poor, Mother Teresa. Bind up broken hearted. <laughs> Freedom for the captives. Release from darkness from the prisoners. The black and white prisoner guy who looks like he's from some sort of movie, I don't know. Um, 
Proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. And the day of vengeance of our God should be a fire from heaven. To comfort all who mourn. A weeping man. A provide for those who grieve in Zion. A weeping angel. To bestow on them the crown of beauty instead of ashes. The oil of joy. Happy sad faces. Garment of praise. Uh, that's the man looking like praise. Best I could do. Um, oaks of righteousness. A big oak tree. Planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Should be seeing some people planting. Rebuild the ancient ruins, a bricklayer. And restore the places long devastated with a trowel. They will renew the, the cities that have been devastated, some ruins. Shepherds, your flock, you should have a flock of sheep. Foreigners who will work in your fields and vineyards should have a picture of a vine, uh, some, vi uh, some grapes on a vine. And you will be called priests of the Lord. Should be a Jewish priest. That's a Jewish priest, by the way. Also, we think. Uh, you will be named ministers of our Lord. Uh, minister with the Bible. You will feed on the wealth of nations, map of the kingdoms. And in their riches you will boast some fake money, monopoly money. Instead of your shame, shame on you with a pointing finger, you receive a double portion. And instead of disgrace, there's a man in disgrace, apparently. Uh, you'll receive your inheritance. Should be a man rejoicing. And you'll inherit a double portion in your land. Uh, literally, there it says double portion. An everlasting joy will be yours. And that should, that's uh, one pointing in different directions. Uh, then uh, love justice, scales of justice. Um, robbery and wrongdoing, a robber. Uh, faithfully, I will reward my people, a reward poster. Everlasting covenant, the rainbow from uh, Genesis, where God promises that he will have a covenant with us. Descendants will be known among the nations, a family tree. And their offspring among the peoples, a big family. And all who see that will acknowledge, a yes man poster. They are the people of the Lord, sunshine. We imagine that being like God coming down from the skies. I delight greatly in the Lord. Four people jumping for joy. My soul rejoices in my God. A child rejoicing. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation. Jesus on the cross. And arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, being crowned, um, sorry, a groom, uh, and then a bride, and then some sprouting stuff coming up from the soil, then some seeds, and then, uh, extra points if you can pronounce this, the next word. Anybody? Jehovah Sidkenu. Jehovah Sid Canoe. And then a desert spring. Hopefully, have you, has everybody got, did, has anybody been missing anything? One. How many missing? One. Five at the back. Poor work there. Missing? Two. Um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to invite Emma to come and read to us. Luke. Can we go back to the beginning, and as Emma reads, can we, um, can we put them up as Emma goes through this reading for us? Thank you. 
going to be rescued. Hang on. There we go. Excellent. Got a loud voice, but not quite that loud a voice. Um, so we're reading from Isaiah uh, chapter 61, um, which if you're looking in your church Bibles is page 748. Um, I'll give you a second to find it if you want to read along. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our Lord, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment, garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness and a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Aliens will shepherd your flocks, foreigners will work your fields and vineyards, and you will be called priests of the Lord. You will be named ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations, and in their riches you will boast. Instead of their shame, my people will receive a double portion, and instead of disgrace, they will rejoice in their inheritance. And so they will inherit a double portion in their land, and every an everlasting joy will be theirs. But I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and iniquity. In my faithfulness, I will reward them and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are the people of, that the Lord has blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the young plant come up, and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness uh, and praise spring up before all nations. Let's stand and worship that God that gives us all those promises as we sing our next song, Jesus, Hope of the Nations.
do grab a seat. So if you haven't been around for all of the weeks, uh, we're kind of taking a hop, skip and a jump through the entire uh, bits of the Bible, giving you some flavours of like how the Bible is built up. And so we started in Genesis and we looked at um, two stories from Genesis. One, the creation story, and then last week you looked at Abraham becoming Abraham and that covenant that God gave. And now we skip forward a few hundred years to Isaiah. So I just want to put that in a bit of context for you. So if I get my bookshelf up again. There we are. There's my bookshelf. Uh, so we were uh, right at the top there uh, in Genesis. And we skipped through the whole of the top shelf. Uh, that's all gone. And now we're down into the f um, those blue books on the second shelf is where we are. Uh, thank you, Luke, for highlighting that. The book of Isaiah, there in our second shelf. Um, and so there's plenty more of the Bible to come, uh, plenty more to, to happen upon. Um, but we're in that second shelf, and we've noticed we've gone um, through all the red historical books, through those kind of greeny coloured books, which are like the wisdom literature, and we're now into what's called the major prophets. The major prophets. Those are the ones that we think are really important. The ones on the next shelf down, they're the minor prophets. They're the ones who didn't quite make it into the top league of prophetdom. Um, so we're going to have a look um, at this reading from Isaiah. Thanks, Luke. You can get rid of the, the bookcase. Um, so the book of Isaiah um, is actually maybe three books, possibly, depending on who you read and how you interpret it. Um, for many, many years, Isaiah was taken as being one whole book written by the prophet Isaiah. However, recent studies have kind of said that it might be up to three authors um, separated into three different sections. And it feels like Isaiah um, had a group of people who he um, ministered with and trained and supported. And so you hear the same voice of Isaiah ringing through the whole book of Isaiah. Um, and so the beginning parts could have been written about 750 years uh, BC, but the last parts may have been as early as 450 BC. In fact, if I have my next picture up, I've done a little bit of a, 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 a handy-dandy guide for you there, for those who like a bit of visual stuff. And so you see the um, years BC along the top there, uh, so from kind of 950 BC um, up until 400 BC, um, and you see kind of where the Israelite people were, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, um, and Persia. You see kind of what's going on there. So you've got northern and southern kingdoms. That's where the uh, the tribes of Israel and Judah split up. Where we see um, uh, the book of Isaiah there, where Judah is alone, that's because uh, the people of Israel have already been taken into captivity. Um, and so Judah remains the only um, Jewish population. And that's where Isaiah begins and speaks into. You see that Isaiah and Jeremiah, uh, Daniel and Ezekiel, all those kind of major prophet people are there in that time, trying to tell the Israelite people a story, trying to tell them what is about to happen to them. Uh, what you see is actually they don't listen, and Judah then gets taken into um, uh, captivity, and then um, there's a post-exile period, and then the Bible is strangely quiet for about 400 years. There's not a lot going on um, as we wait for Jesus to come. Um, thank you, Luke. I think if you leave that up, I'll just end up being headless for most of the, the rest of my talk. But that hopefully gives you a bit of an idea and a bit of a, uh, an understanding of where this falls in the time. So the Jewish people have done uh, the, the same thing that they do throughout the whole of the Old Testament. They've started to fall away from uh, following God and being part of what he wants for them. And Isaiah writes into that time, trying to tell them to turn back to God, trying to tell them to come back to who they are. It would be easy just to spend your time being a prophet and sharing all of the bad news. But actually, what we discover through this uh, Isaiah 61, there is a sense of hope 
for the future. And do you notice, if you look at those pictures and you look at that reading, that the pictures of the reading have um, some things that are really joyous and some things that are really dark, some things that are really good and some things that are really bad. And the prophet Isaiah there is writing and we're hearing what might be coming in the future, what may be happening in the future. There's a sense that it might be both for the people of the Jewish people there and then in that time, that there will be a time of post-exile where they'll all come back together um, and the kingdom will be strong again and we see that happen. But actually there's more than that. There's more than that going on. And we see that as we come into um, the New Testament. And I'll talk a little bit about where that comes in a moment. But let's just think about what it would be like to be that group of people. So do you remember uh, when I started, I talked about how we maybe try and read the Bible in really simple terms. We say, what is happening? And then we say, so what does that mean now? So the what of happening there is a group of people who are not managing to uh, live to God's rule. But actually they're kind of understanding that life has got bad. But like many things, um, when we have maybe those of us who have children or have been with people who are having difficult times, there's a hope of a, of a consolation in the future. We'll say to people, don't worry, we know life is bad now, but we trust that goodness is coming in the future. We know that life is bad now. We know that life is difficult now, but we trust that goodness is coming in the future. And there's some interesting lines. I don't know whether you picked up on the fact that there's a sense of the foreigner coming in to do the work of the Israelite people. The foreigners will come and will tend your vineyards, um, and you will be released to be God's people. Um, there's a sense of hope for the future that um, things will get good. And we see that in as um, you look through the Bible and you see people coming back from Babylon and Jerusalem being rebuilt and the whole of the Jewish people coming back into good times. But then, like most things, they fall away again and life becomes difficult again and then we come into the new testament and so the new testament harks back to this reading in isaiah 61 um if you are already kind of alert you might be thinking oh yes i recognize these words from luke chapter 4 it's the beginning of jesus tell, talk, giving his um, his missional statement he stands up in the synagogue and he takes the scroll of isaiah and he turns to the place where this is written. And he reads out what we have just read. And then he says these words. He says, In your hearing, this has been fulfilled. He says that I am the fulfillment of this reading. And so often when we read the Bible, we have to kind of look at it from lots of different angles. It'd be really easy to say, okay, so let's look at Isaiah 61 in isolation and say, what does it say for us now? But actually you can't do that. You've got to say, what does it say in the light of Christ who has reinterpreted it for us? So it had a, me a meaning for the Israelite people, the what for the Israelite people at that time. Then Jesus comes along and he says, I'm going to look back on that and I'm going to reinterpret it and say, actually, I am the fulfillment of that goal. I'm the fulfillment of that goal. So then that leads us to say, okay, Gareth, that's great. So if it was there for the Israelite people, then Jesus said, I came and fulfilled it. Why are we even bothering about talking about it now? So this is where we get into the what now. So we know it's all about good times coming. We know that Jesus said, I am the fulfillment of this. We live in this odd time, don't we? Where Jesus has been, we know that, 2,000 years ago, Jesus was born, lived his life, um, did his miracles, changed the world, reset the clocks, did all of that, was the fulfillment of this passage that we've just read. But we're still here. Because we're waiting for something, aren't we? We're waiting for Jesus to come again. We're waiting for the end times. We're waiting for those times when we get to Revelation in a few weeks' time and we think about what will happen in the future. So we sit in the uh, now but not yet of history, spanning all of this time, looking at it and thinking, we know that Jesus and the victory is secure. and we Because we know when we trust in this future and we hear what Jesus said, but we live in this time. And so my question for us then is, what does this mean for us? Well,
have we heard that call to freedom? In all of this passage, it talks about us being free. Do we hear that call today that we are free because we know Jesus? Or do we still live in some sort of spiritual bondage? Some sort of spiritual um, fetters and chains that hold us down? Have we fully engaged with who Christ is in our lives to give us that freedom to be the people that God has called us to be? That, for me, I think is one of the first questions it should ask us. Then it probably asks us, understanding that Christ has come, that he is the fulfillment of this, we still yet see people who don't have the freedom of this passage, who don't have the joy of the salvation, who don't know that. And so for me, the what now is, oh, Jesus didn't just come to fulfill it in his person. He came to set up a whole faith of people who would fulfill this in time who would be part of this action. Because it's really easy to imagine ourselves as people who come on a Sunday, we worship God, we sing some great songs, we talk about Jesus, but then we go out there and we do nothing about it. Isaiah 61 is a call for us to live a life that sees these things happen. That we become agents of people who see shoots spring up where there were none because of the actions that we take. Where we see prisoners released from their uh, uh, their prisons, whether that be physically or uh, metaphorically, but we are people who do that. And so my hope, and the reason why I put this in this section, is we've seen a little bit of the history. We've understood that Isaiah says that this will come. Jesus says, I am here, and now we carry on that mantle. We are supposed to be active people. And what we'll see now as we journey through into the New Testament is how that activity comes. So maybe the what now for you is to maybe go away and have a look at Isaiah 61. And ask yourself two questions. Where am I lacking in some of these things? And where do I want to see some of this stuff? So maybe take Isaiah 61 as your reading for this week. Go and read it every day. It's quite short, isn't it? Go and read it every day. Go and spend some time with it every day and say, God, where do I need some of these things? Where am I feeling like some of these things that you have written about are for me? And then ask the question, where do I see this in our society? And God, how can I be part of your salvation story? How can I join with you to make a change? So hopefully... There's some homework for you to do, and hopefully you've just seen a little bit about how we can look at the Old Testament with the light of Christ and get something out of it that maybe changes from just being a historical document. Because I know that lots of people maybe read the Old Testament and go, I'm much more of a New Testament Christian, really, Gareth. Don't really go in for that Old Testament stuff. But actually, the question of the Old Testament is, how did Jesus come and reinterpret it? What did it mean in the light of knowing that Jesus is here? And so every time you read the Old Testament, ask yourself that question. What does it mean knowing that Jesus has arrived? And how does that reinterpret it? At the very least, go away and dwell with Isaiah 61 verses 1 to 11 this week. Go and hang out in that area and ask those two questions. What does this mean for me? Be prayerful in that action. And what does it mean for our society? And how can I be involved in that? Let's stand and sing again. We worship the garden walls. We worship the garden ways. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened
seat as Rhoda comes to lead us in prayer. Father God, we have heard that you're in this place and we pray to you now knowing that and we thank you for this. We pray for our world that we live in. We pray for the people of Ukraine. We read about the brutality of war on the people of that country and we pray for a ceasefire. We pray for a lasting peace. And we pray that this will happen soon. Father, we know that there are many countries in the world where Christians are facing extreme persecution. Almost 6,000 Christians were killed last year, murdered for their faith. We pray for our brothers and sisters in those countries that you will sustain their faith in you. We pray for those who persecute them that you will soften their hearts. Father, we pray for families in this country, particularly, who are struggling to pay their bills. And we pray that solutions may be found to this situation by the government, both national and local, by society and by the church. Father, we pray for the schools in our towns. We hear that following COVID lockdown, that there is an increase in problems with behavior, and we pray that the teachers you will give them wisdom in dealing with these problems and still be able to teach all the children well. We pray for your church in this town. We pray for all the Christian churches. Help us to work together for your glory. We pray that you will bless the work of the Rediscover Church as they set up the coffee shop in Bank Street. Father, we pray for our church leaders. We pray for Gareth, pray for Ben. Strengthen their relationship with you. Give them energy and wisdom as they serve the church here. Father, we pray for those who are sick in our church community. We pray that you will heal them. We've heard that you are a healing God who saves. We pray that they will experience your love and care to them. Father, we pray for Noah Maynard that you will continue to show him your love and peace as he continues with his treatment. Father, we pray that you will sustain the other members of his family during this difficult time. 
Father, we pray for our three home groups that you will bless them. May they be an opportunity to strengthen our bonds with each other and with you. Father, we've read Isaiah 61 this morning. We've heard the sermon. Father, help us to uh, ponder on these things. Father, we ask that you will give each one of us a special experience of your freedom, freedom in Jesus that you give. We ask all these in the name of Jesus. Amen. Just a couple of things to make you aware of. Um, first thing, uh, we're rapidly heading towards the end of May, and uh, that means that we join together as because uh, there's five Sundays in May, uh, and that means on the fifth Sunday we join together as a whole parish um, in a parish service. And so the 29th, I think May, 29th of May, will be at All Saints High Week at 9.30 in the morning. So if you want to come and join me and the rest of the uh, parish in uh, High Week, then you are welcome to come and to join with the rest of the parish. Uh, there will be uh, drinks and nibbles served after the meal. Uh, I have told there will be sherry and all sorts of nice things. Uh, so if that's a draw to you for the, your morning worship, uh, then come and join me for that. Um, also to say, Roland prayed for our home groups, and I want to mention this. If you're not part of a home group and you want to be part of a home group, um, then come and speak to either, uh, come and speak to me. Uh, come and have a chat with me and we'll see whether there's one that would work for you. But um, they are a really good use of, um, of time to kind of uh, meet people and maybe uh, have an opportunity to talk about things that we don't necessarily get to have time on a Sunday morning. Men's breakfast this coming Saturday morning uh, at Weatherspoons at 9.30. 9.30 breakfast, men, Weatherspoons. Um, if that works for you, come and, uh, come and be part of that. Uh, I think that's it. Is it, Peter? Um, oh, just one other thing to say. Um, I don't often talk about money, but uh, I was reminded in uh, our APCM to uh, do a little bit better at this. So... Um, we don't pass around a plate in this church, uh, mainly because we think that um, those people who attend church and are part of the church family should support the church family. Um, but if you um, want to give to the work of this church, you'll find there's two ways of doing it. You can either do it ad hocly as you leave by contactless payment on the right-hand side. Peter will be around that kind of area, I guess. And if you want to give regularly, then we have a direct debit scheme uh, that runs through the... Uh, church uh, parish giving scheme where we can reclaim uh, the gift aid and stuff like that really efficiently and easily and so those are the two ways that we do giving and you'll find them on the right hand side as you go out let's stand and sing our last song uh, we're going to sing my lighthouse in my wrestling
Let's finish with a few words of prayer. To a troubled world, peace from Christ. To a searching world, love from Christ. To a waiting world, hope from Christ. Amen.